Of all the rules out there for Dungeons and Dragons, probably the most disused and derided rule are the rules for tracking encumbrance and tracking weight. It's not really hard to see why this would be. The rules are not a lot of fun to deal with. Even going back to early editions, you are tracking a lot of very fiddly numbers. Whenever you're picking up items, whenever you're dropping items, it would require you to recalculate all of your weight over again, and that's really not a lot of fun. No one likes pulling out a calculator in order to play Dungeons and Dragons. I think that's a little bit of a shame, unfortunately, just because actually keeping track of what you're carrying and how much you can carry and knowing when you have to drop something to pick something else up can be a really interesting part of your game. It can add a lot of realism, it can add immersion, and it can add interesting decisions into the game. So today we're gonna to look at encumbrance and weight tracking and see if there are some easier and more fun ways to do it than just writing down a list of the pounds of everything that you carry. I'm Ben and this is Questing Beast, a show about old RPGs and the renaissance that is bringing these old systems back to life again. If you're interested in this series that I'm doing on old school rules and ways to improve your game, remember to hit the subscribe button down below and the bell icon if you wanna get notified when I make new releases. Also, stick around to the end of the video when I will be doing a giveaway for an old school mega dungeon, a big old beast of a book, over a thousand rooms to explore, and you can sign up to get your name put into the pot to receive it for yourself. So stick around to see how to do that. Before we get into ways to make this easier though, let's think about reasons why we would even want to track weight in our game to start with. The first big reason I can think of is because it adds more immersion to the game. Players are going to deal with the concrete reality of their situation a bit more when they can only carry so much stuff. They're going to look around for tools to carry. They're going to think about things that they have to drop. They're going to start curating their equipment loadout and start focusing on a niche that they're really good at dealing with. They're not going to be able to take an entire uh, hardware store full of items and just dump it all into their backpack and have it just be good. They're going to have to think about what they're going to carry. They're going to have to specialize and they'll have to pay attention to the world a bit more than they did before. The second big reason is resource management. So this isn't going to be true for every type of game, but it's generally true that if you're in a game where you can carry an unlimited number of resources, then the game starts lacking tension and starts just feeling kind of floaty where things don't matter quite as much. Especially if we look at old versions of D&D, where you're doing dungeon crawls, where it's all about how deep can you get into the dungeon and still stay alive and be able to get out with your stuff, then having strict limits for what you can carry is super important. Uh, this is just because if you can carry as many resources as you like, then there's no limit to how far you can go. There's no tension, there's no risk and reward involved there. However, even if you're running higher level epic type campaigns, maybe with fifth edition, resource management can still be a big issue. The issue is just the resources are larger now. Perhaps we're dealing with magic items, perhaps we're dealing with powerful potions or weapons or things like that. Having players be able to carry everything means that what they carry doesn't matter as much. And it forces them to not have to make those hard decisions um, that they would have to make otherwise. Another big reason is that having a limited inventory where you can only carry so much stuff means that problem solving is going to be more of a focus in the game. And for me, that's a big deal because I love the problem solving nature of D&D and the way that problems can be solved in an infinite number of ways. Um, but when you have a constricted number of tools to deal with, it makes problem solving more fun because you have to get more creative at it. It's a little bit like being a wizard. Wizards can't carry an infinite number of spells. They have a very particular set that they have to pick every day. And then part of being a wizard is figuring out how can I use the spells that I have to help me out in the situation in which I find myself. So the same principle applies to equipment, in my opinion. It's a lot more fun when you only have a grappling hook and a file, and you have to figure out a way to deal with whatever bizarre trap that you are faced with. There's a fourth reason that really has to do more with dungeon crawls, and that's the risk and reward of figuring out how much can I carry in terms of how much treasure can I acquire and still be able to get out of the dungeon alive. This is especially the case if you have a system where your encumbrance, the more you carry, the slower that you go. So as you pick up more and more treasure, that can mean more and more experience points after the dungeon because uh, XP was often rewarded for gold. But it also means that you move slowly, you move more clumsily, and you're more likely to die. So that balance of risk and reward can be a nice source of tension if you're playing that sort of game. But all of this is really for nothing if you don't have a system that makes tracking the weight and tracking the amount of stuff that you can carry really simple and intuitive. 
This is the big problem with the way that the rules are now. If things are onerous and cumbersome to deal with, players will just ignore them. So it has to be really simple and players have to enjoy interacting with it. The simplest solution, which I recommend that pretty much everyone use, is just item slots. So instead of tracking the individual weight of items, what you're doing is you're just tracking the number of items that you have. The vast majority of items just count as a normal item. So roughly three to five pounds, about the weight of a sword, say, is a good unit for a standard item. Really small items like pieces of chalk, for example, wouldn't really count unless you're carrying a huge number of them. Uh, same thing for coins. A good rule of thumb is that maybe 100 coins equals a normal sized item. And if you're carrying really large or bulky items like pole arms or heavy armor, or you're trying to carry an entire chest full of treasure, that might count as two or three normal sized items. So what you do is you need a system that tracks how many items you can carry, and then you just look at the items in your inventory and count them up. And depending on how many you have, you're either encumbered or you're not encumbered. It's dead simple. Players seem to really love it. It's easy to track and it just gets out of your way while leaving the benefits of tracking weight and encumbrance still intact. The very first example of this that I've ever run into was in the 1985 game Dragon Warriors. In that, the number of items you could carry was, I think, 6, 8, 10, 12, or 14 items. And that was based on your strength rating. That would determine how many items you could carry. It was really simple and straightforward and a big improvement over a lot of the games that had come before that. Uh, if you are aware of earlier games that use this kind of slot based encumbrance, please let me know in the comments below because I would be very interested to hear about that. Today, it's most likely to find this kind of slot based encumbrance in the old school Renaissance or OSR. These types of games place a big emphasis on resource management. So you have to have a rule like this and slot based encumbrance just makes things easier. It's been a bit disappointing to me that more um, big time players out there aren't using this type of rule and are still defaulting to tracking the number of pounds that you're carrying, since I think everyone's aware that no one really uses that by now. There are a few exceptions though. Uh, the Pathfinder 2 system has a really nice clean system where I think the general rule is that you can carry five bulk is their term for it, plus your strength modifier in large sized items. They have other little rules like a small item, 10 of those will uh, count as a one bulk, and then really small items like chalk wouldn't really count. And I think you can add on an extra five bulk if you want to be encumbered, but no more than beyond that. So it's a basically slot based encumbrance and, and really simple. It's cool to see a big crunchy game like Pathfinder start to take encumbrance seriously and make it easier for players to deal with. If you want to make things even easier, though, you don't have to anchor the number of slots that you have to a particular character score. In games like Lamentations of the Flame Princess or Troika, there's simply a set number of items that everyone can carry, and it doesn't really vary from person to person. This makes it much easier to remember. And then usually how it works is that they have gradations where at certain tipping points, you move up to being encumbered or maybe extra encumbered and you start taking penalties but everything is very chunky and easy to memorize in terms of where you are on this scale so that players will still use it. One of the cool things about slot-based encumbrance is that you can start hooking other rules onto this system in a way that makes them more entertaining and engaging for players. So for example, what I did in my own game, Nave, is I made item slots the exact same thing as spell slots. So the way it works is that if you have a, a spell book, spell books can only contain one spell and they take up an entire item slot. So do you wanna be a wizard? That means that all of your item slots will have to be filled up with spell books. This means that you will have less room for things like armor, less room for weapons and things like that. In other words, you'll be more like a wizard. It all fits together that way. You also have systems like the adorable mouse ridder game where you play a mouse living in a human sized world and having adventures. And what that does is it uses actual little item cards. There we go and you actually cut them out with scissors and you place them on your character sheet and arrange them kind of like an old school video game like Diablo where you're Tetrising all of your little items together. That's really fun because it makes things really tactile and it allows them to easily trade them with other players and it's very visual. But they do something else really cool on top of that. Whenever they have things like conditions, conditions like exhausted, frightened, hungry, injured, and so on, those come on these little red cards. You cut these out and you also put them on your item slots. So they take up space, allowing you to carry less stuff because you're injured or exhausted and so on. So this is a really great visual way of taking conditions, which are often very abstract and hard to remember, and putting them right on your character sheet and having it affect gameplay in a very concrete way. 
So that's my take on encumbrance. The rules are not complicated. It's a very straightforward system to use. I would try implementing it in your home game and see what players think. My impression is that a lot of them will like it. Players, I find, like making choices and they like curating things. And that's gonna happen very quickly when they have to start deciding what they're gonna carry and they're not going to carry. Before we go, I am giving away this huge copy of Gunderholfen, this giant, fat, old school mega dungeon. If you would like to win this, all you have to do is go down to the description below and sign up for the Questing Beast newsletter. Even if you don't win this, you're still a winner because the Questing Beast newsletter is really, really cool. I have on good authority. It's just a once a month email. It's giant and it fills you in on all of the really cool stuff, whether that be reviews or videos or podcasts or theory or new game content that has happened over the last month that you may have missed. So lots of fun stuff to check out there. You can even read past issues if you go to the link below and you want to see if it's right for you or not. So just sign up for the newsletter, get your name in the running, and I will send this out to one lucky winner about a week from now. I'll just email you if you're the winner. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you next time.